saving our energy crisis, why we need to come up with better ways to produce energy, and some of the effects of burning fossil fuels. why we need to resolve the energy crisis and some of the effects burning fossil fuels has on our environment. One of them is pollution. Pollution occurs from burning fossil fuels and creates smog or other gases such as greenhouse gases and toxic pollutants, some of which could lead to climate change. Land degradation can occur from the extraction of fossil fuels, such as coal and oil, and could harm the ecosystem, as you can see here on the slide. The land itself seems uninhabitable. Water pollution can also occur from extracting oil and coal. This pollution could harm the ecosystem and make it inhabitable for other animals. What is the solution, you may ask? While there are a variety of renewable resources, I believe this one could potentially be the best option. What type of energy could I be talking about? I am talking about the energy stored in our currents. Whether it's the ocean or river currents, this type of energy is constant and predictable, making it a good source for our energy production. This energy can be harnessed using underwater turbines, which can run off the force of the currents. These turbines will be placed near the ocean floor or a float. They can also run 24-7 since the ocean and river currents never stop running and can produce a constant supply of energy. Here is an example of an underwater turbine. Although the idea is not new and hasn't been exploited as much as you would think, it is due to the cost. It costs a lot to build underwater turbines compared to solar and wind energy. This one here has been made where it can come out of the water for maintenance. The underwater turbines will be placed near the rivers, uh, either along or sideways, or along the coast, uh, along the ocean currents, and uh, produce energy constant year-round. This way we have a production either inland or near the coast. This is an example of an operating plant, one of two, which uses tidal energy to produce electricity. This one in particular can produce 500 gigawatt hours per year and does so through 24 generators, each producing 10 megawatts. Next up is a video showing us exactly how efficient underwater turbines can be and their potential. With their underwater turbines, which look remarkably like normal wind turbines, but thanks to water's higher density, can be much smaller. Their first prototype system was placed here in the mouth of Strangford Lock in Ireland. 
This area benefits from some of the fastest flowing water in Ireland as tides force their way in and out of the bottleneck of Strangford Lock. Millions of tons of water flow through the channel every day. The system consisted of two 16 meter diameter turbines with a nameplate capacity of 0.6 megawatts each. For reference, an equivalent wind turbine would have a diameter of around 40 meters. These turbines reached full capacity in November 2008 and were decommissioned in May 2016. If that 1.2 megawatts ran continuously at full capacity for all of that time, it would result in 77 to 79 gigawatt hours of power. However, it only produced 11.6 gigawatt hours, enough to power around 1,000 American homes for one year. But that's just 15% of its full potential. That percentage is called a capacity factor, and 15% is a very low capacity factor, with Ireland's five-year average wind energy capacity factor standing around 28%. However, this was a prototype, which did not run continuously and was routinely taken offline for inspection and research. In their best month, CGEN produced 522 megawatt hours with a capacity factor of 59%, and CGEN claim that that is reproducible year round. As you can tell, underwater turbines could be pretty efficient, and I believe it could be the solution to our energy crisis. If you want to learn more about underwater turbines, you can check out these references.